with Circle pulling out over $300 million worth of their fiat-backed stablecoin USDC from the Tron ecosystem. This has a lot of the Cardano community wondering, you know, where is USDM and whether or not it's actually worth the risk of investing in adopting something like USDC or inviting Circle in to the Cardano ecosystem. What's up, Ada Nation? Welcome to Dapp Central, your home for everything blockchain and crypto. My name is Fareed. As a part of today's video, we're diving into all the latest progress and updates for the month of February surrounding Mahen. Now, Mahen is a highly anticipated fiat backed staple coin, which has been really pushing the bar here for Cardano, bringing much needed liquidity and adoption outside of inviting somebody like Circle in. I just mentioned that earlier that we did see Circle pulling out of Tron, which has caused a lot of worry about how that could potentially impact Cardano if they were to be inducted into this growing ecosystem. So as a part of today's video, I want to lay down the foundation and just give you guys some updates surrounding how well Mahen is doing. First things first, I want to highlight their Sunday swap audit and exactly how much longer it is until we have the ability to get our hands on that. And after that, I want to talk about their March 16th launch, which will be for the United States. But then I also want to quickly highlight their non-US based launch. Following that, I want to talk about Project Catalyst and exactly how much progress they've made on that particular front. And then last but not least, I want to quickly highlight Chainrace and how that development is going. As always, if you guys enjoy updates like these, please make sure to smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by and you want more content like this, covering all the builders in Cardano, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions for me surrounding Mahen or any of the topics that we'll be discussing today, then make sure to go ahead and leave a comment down below. To kick things off, I want to quickly go ahead and plug in the Mahen newsletter as well as the Mahen Medium blog posts. So the blog posts are done once per month. The last one was surrounding the beginning of the Sunday Swap audit and some of the changes coming down the pipes. But the latest update has come through the form of their actual newsletter. So make sure to go ahead and subscribe to that. As always, I'll leave the link to it down below. Kicking things off here, we'll start off by discussing the smart contract audit report. So Mahen was aiming to launch on December 19th and due to some protocol findings, right, with the actual smart contracts, the team has decided to go back and make some updates to make the protocol much more secure and much more robust moving forward in case that they want to upgrade it moving in the future. So with respect to that, they have partnered up with Pi Laningham and the rest of their team there from Sunday Labs in order for them to perform the audit. So regarding that, it states that Sunday Swap audit of the Mahen protocol is nearly complete and Pi is promising a 42 page report highlighting all of their findings. Jumping over into Twitter, we have Pi confirming just that stating we're putting the finishing touches on the 42 page paper or the Mahan audit report. Now, where they currently stand right now is at what they call their round table, which is very similar to a thesis defense, where all the auditors and people that have been reviewing the Mahan smart contracts are basically grilled and asked super tough questions surrounding their logic, surrounding, uh, surrounding their reasoning and how they've come to conclusions, right? For some of the findings, whether they're good or bad for the Mahan smart contract. So it sounds like a lot of really good progress on that front. Moving over, um, I want to quickly take a minute to shout out the team here. So we've got Matt Tristan, aka Plutus Plumbus, who's a really good friend of mine. We've also got their CTO, Steve Fisher, who I've had the pleasure of sitting down and talking to at the recent Rare Bloom and Rare Evo events, as well as Sean and some devs who also contribute to the project who wish to remain anonymous. So thank you all for just your hard work, your contributions, and we're definitely here to back you up here from within the Cardano community. Moving along, when it comes to whether or not the team is still on track to launch on March 16th, as of the release of this particular newsletter, which was done on February 19th, the team did confirm that they still are on track for that official launch date. Now, is it possible that, that the team gets pushed back? Of course, anything within crypto is possible. For example, if there is some sort of delay or issue with the Oracle provider, if there's an issue with the banking uh, arms or the banking service providers, or even just with respect to regulation, right? We could see another pushback. So the hope is that we don't see any sort of pushback, especially this late in the game. Again, it's about three weeks out until we see the actual launch. Um, which right now does sound very promising if the team is still confident. I would assume that if they were not confident that that would have been made known a little bit earlier. Now, is it also possible that the team launches early? Yes, but I definitely wouldn't hold my breath to it. Um, I would definitely say to the team, take your time, make sure to do this right. And there's never any rush, right? Obviously, the community would be extremely happy if we got this earlier, but I don't think that at this point that it would hurt if you guys just delivered there on March 16th. Scrolling down with respect to Project Catalyst, if you guys are not aware, the Mahen team 
team was funded through Project Catalyst funding round number 11. I believe they received it was somewhere around 800,000 ADA which is now worth at around $400,000 to develop and bring Mahan to Cardano. So it states here that we finally made it through the Project Catalyst review process with our first two milestones. Taking a quick break here, if you guys are not familiar with the milestone approach for Project Catalyst moving forward, because people just did not deliver in times past, there was no way for accountability and for just a measurement of progress for proposals. The team has implemented what they call milestones. So every few milestones, they'll be checking in, reviewing all the deliverables and making sure that they are up to par before the Mahen team or any of the funded projects are able to actually receive additional funding. So as it stands right now, Mahen has completed two of their milestones, and I believe it's two out of four. So jumping into the actual proposal here, milestone number one was all based surrounding the initial designs and architecture of the extra protocol so they focused on the user interface and the user experience and just designing that graphics for their websites documentation for the system requirements etc milestone number two was more or less focused on the software systems as well as documenting how they would actually work as well as beginning to lay down some of the off-chain or back-end infrastructure. Moving over into milestone number three, which is currently in progress, they'll be focusing on their web application. They'll also be focusing on wrapping up the back-end services and integrating the actual banking services and their features as well. Now that includes being able to link to a bank, removing a bank, depositing funds, and withdrawing funds as well. Last but not least, they'll be finalizing their USDM minting service and infrastructure updates surrounding their AWS architecture. So jumping back over there, that's with updates for Project Catalyst. And they do state here that once they get the Sunday swap audit findings in that finalized report, that that should help them complete milestone number three, therefore unlocking additional or future funding. Next, I want to quickly touch on Chainraise. So Chainraise is a platform that allows for the tokenization of equity and just the investment of different protocols or different platforms focusing on Web3. And if you're not aware, Mahen is the token issuing company for USDM. Now they have a parent company, right? Which is basically in charge of doing all of the business related activities. And they're also sort of a business entity. And that is W3I Software Incorporated. So they have all the licensing agreements in place with Mahen in order to actually develop their software. This is very similar to what we see with Sunday Swap, the decentralized protocol, and the Sunday Labs team, which is actually managing and developing all of their code. Very similarly, we have Indigo and Indigo Labs, where Indigo is the decentralized protocol run by their DAO, and Indigo Labs is the team that's in charge of actually deploying and developing all of their code. So with respect to that, the SEC paperwork for W3I Software Inc. is nearly complete, which I believe will offer the team to be listed officially on Chain Race. If you guys want to find out more about Chain Race, it's available at chainrace.io. Again, they allow for investing in equity or getting a portion of the ownership of a particular platform through their platform or through their website. Jumping back over, um, we do have some regulatory updates here as well. So this touches on Operation Choke Point 2.0, which if you're not familiar with, is basically a movement from the government, specifically focusing within the United States, and them trying to keep crypto at bay from traditional finance and just the traditional banking rules. So it states that the federal government is pressuring U.S. banks to avoid all things crypto. This has been an ongoing narrative for at least the last year, um, kicking things off with FTX and how that brought a lot of um, eyes into the space and a lot of regulatory scrutiny. But scrolling down, it talks about USDM actually launching um, outside, of the US, outside of the U.S. as well in order to get away from some of those regulatory hurdles. So it reads, firstly, we're moving forward on our non-US launch timeline. So USDM will launch within the United States, but then also gonna have foreign companies or foreign entities that will also allow for them to mint USDM as well outside of the US. Continuing on, we have begun the process of establishing offshore banking partnerships and setting up licensed foreign companies. Now, with respect to the launch in the United States, the USDM launch will still be taking place on March 16th with a limited release in 17 states where the team has been approved. Now, as of now, it appears that they'll only be able to support payments 
to mint USDM by wire transfer, which takes a little bit longer to settle and has higher banking fees than a than a typical money transfer. Now, ideally, um, they would have ACH support, which would be a little bit faster. And again, that may be cheaper as well. I'm not in the banking space, but those are just some of the more common ways that we see um, transfers being done from a bank with a customer. So initially, payments by wire transfer. And I want to take a moment here just to highlight the fact that not everybody will actually need to mint USDM, right? So very similar to Jed, we saw a big threshold and a big fee to actually mint Jed, which disincentivized regular traders or regular users of the Cardano ecosystem to mint on their own, right? Because again, they don't want to have to deal with the process of somebody only minting 100 Jed or even 1,000 Jed, right? Where they had a limit, I think it was about 10,000 Jed or $10,000 before you could actually even mint as a minimum. Very similarly, I would assume that um, with hand will probably see some pretty big entities minting a lot of usdm initially bringing that on chain and then put it providing liquidity and ways for us to um, actually get access to usdm without necessarily having to mint our own obviously if you want to go ahead and mint your own the team will have the ability for you to do that right but they haven't actually announced any of the thresholds or um, lower bound limits in terms of minimums that you have to actually go ahead and utilize in order to mint now, again, keep in mind that there may be KYC and AML um, rules or requirements that are associated with actually minting as well as on ramping and off ramping with USDM. So if you only want to utilize the stable coin on chain, you can do that, but you have to wait for um, some of these larger players to mint enough and then distribute that on DEXs and liquidity pools. Jumping back in here, one last thing I want to qu quickly highlight is the fact that um, initially the process of minting and burning USDM will be a little bit clunky, but the team is working on a variety of integrations with large partners that will make getting USDM on a DEX much easier. So really kind of touching on and finishing up that last point that I made there, you know, no need to worry. Of course, again, this protocol will mature and things will get easier as time goes on. But as it stands right now, just for the first use case, the MVP just to get it out there, it seems like the team does have everything in place to do with that and to deliver on time. As I mentioned earlier, make sure to go ahead and sign up for their newsletter and make sure to follow them on Medium. But let me know what you guys think down below, you know, especially after the issues that we've just seen with Tron. You know, are you still in the camp of getting something like USDM? Would you still like to see Circle integrating here on Cardano? Um, and if you haven't already gotten a chance to check out my last video, then please make sure to go ahead and do so. Again, it really breaks down, um, number one, the impact that it has on Tron with Circle leaving, but the number two, speculation around why they've actually left, you know, so that's another thing too is, as well is that Circle hasn't really actually provided any sort of clarity as to why they're pulling out of Tron other than saying that they want to keep their reputation whole. So could we see, you know, something like Circle coming into Cardano, us paying a hefty fine to bring them on board only for them to pull out a year or two later if they're not satisfied with the relationship? You know, could that be the case? At this point, it does look like that is the case with Tron. And again, there's really been no reasoning, whereas with Mahen, even though they technically could pull the plug, right, there's nothing stopping them from doing that um, because they're homegrown, because they're built here within Cardano. I think that that likelihood is much less than that compared to with Circle. That will do it here for today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. As always, if you found this to be helpful, I would appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by and you want more content like this, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions or comments, then leave them down below. That's said and as always i'll see you guys in the next video